These are the five guys, in my opinion, that could go to WWE tomorrow and make an immediate impact. Chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Wrestling, everybody, where I have better wrestling takes than you, and you know it. And today, guys, we're going to talk about five wrestlers that need to go to WWE, or I think would be at least good fits in WWE, after their contracts expire with AEW. And you guys can, in the comments, feel free to add, because there's a lot of people on the AEW roster. Many of them are ex-WWE. So the people I'm mentioning in this video, as far as I know, have never been full-time WWE staff. Some of them might have had appearances here and there very briefly, but nothing long-term. The first person on this list, as you guys might be able to guess, is Ricky Starks. Now, Ricky is in the feud right now with Juice Robinson. And it's funny, if you remember, whenever Ricky first started this feud, the Bullet Club theme played. And the crowd lost their mind thinking it was Jay White. Which again, I don't really know much about Jay White or anything in Japan, but he's very popular it seems like. And then it was this guy Juice Robinson. So they blue balled that, and then a few weeks later, now Jay White actually comes out. So now Ricky is probably going to be with what, Action Andretti or some goofy nonsense. The point is, Ricky is very, very underutilized. Pound for pound, he's probably the most underutilized talent in all elite wrestling. He had a great feud with MJF. Those guys barely had any time to even make the feud happen, and they put on a banger. The match had a few botches in it, but it's not that big of a deal. It was still a very good match. It had a pay-per-view feel to it. Their promo battle was great. Ricky can talk. He can wrestle. In terms of the size, he might need to get a little bit bigger to be taken very seriously, but he's at least tall, right? So he's got everything tangibly speaking. And if you guys have seen, he is good friends with Cody. I think Ricky came under fire recently because he went to some event that Cody was at, or like he went to some pay-per-view at WWE backstage or a show or something and he basically posted about it so I'm sure he's going to be in Tony Khan's doghouse forever truthfully I think that's what he wants I don't think he cares I get the impression from watching Ricky lately he's mentally checked out I'm sure he feels and rightfully so that he is being shafted because he is undoubtedly one of the best talkers in the company one of the most organically over guys but he keeps getting pushed down the card for all these other schlubs that Tony Khan loves to promote so Ricky Starks would he be main event material in WWE? I don't fully know. He'd be a great mid-carder, though, for sure. And I think if you give him a few years, I think he could become in world title contention eventually. Because that's WWE's biggest problem, too, man. They lack characters who are captivating and who people really want to see. And Starks fits that bill. He's friends with Cody. He's mentally checked out. All signs point to him going to WWE. I just hope they don't screw him up. And on the topic of Ricky, the next guy on this list is his former FTW teammate, Powerhouse Hobbs. And Hobbs has a star written all over him. He's got the size, he's got the look, he's gotten better on the promo game. I mean, he is just a ton of untapped potential. So he currently, if I'm not mistaken, unless AEW changed the title again, which they might by the time you see this video, they love to play hot potato with their TNT belt or whatever it is. But... Hobbs is the champion at the current point, but to win that, he had to get the assistance of freaking QT Marshall. And now they do this gimmick where QT's his manager and they do like a TMZ type of segment. It's just so ridiculous, man. Once again, it's a typical case of AEW has somebody that could be a big star and Tony Khan totally butchers it. WWE is not immune to this, but the AEW fans talk like Tony just does everything right. And it's like, nah, he does plenty wrong. So... Hobbs, in this current gimmick, it's not going to go anywhere. I don't really know what else to say about the guy. He's got everything on paper you would want in a future star. Going to something like WWE where he really learns about like the technicalities of wrestling, more production type stuff like the timing, all this stuff that in AEW none of them learn or are told, or I guess they don't pay attention if they are told. You know, these talent are always looking at the wrong camera. They can't get to commercial break in time, all these spots, right? Promos and stuff. So WWE's really buttoned up structure, I think, would help him a lot in terms of developing like his promo game and the character more so. And even if Hobbs has to go to WWE and need a manager there, that's fine. He's still a big beast. People are going to watch him based on that fact alone. So you don't have to put Hobbs and Starks together in WWE. I don't know if you even want to do that necessarily, assuming they go there, but Hobbs's full potential would be unleashed in WWE. 
Once again, he'd be a great guy to throw into the mid-card title picture initially. He'd be great on NXT. You could put him anywhere except the upper card, at least when he first gets there, and he would make an immediate impact. The fans would be drawn to him. He can be a monster heel, and he can even be a face if you kind of spin it that way, depending on the situation. Now, number three on this list, this is tough because I originally had down Brian Cage. I think his physique definitely matches WWE better, but charisma-wise, he's tough because he's just not a good talker. He's one of those guys where his physique does not match his voice. So I'm conflicted if I should say Brian Cage or Lance Archer here because Archer is taller Archer, I haven't heard him talk a lot recently, but as far as I know, he can at least cut a halfway convincing promo. So maybe we're going to have to call number three a tie, Brian Cage and Lance Archer. Either way, neither of these guys are utilized. The thing with Brian Cage is his style is way too video gamey for his physique, right? Like he treats everything like he's this tiny luchador guy, which that's part of the appeal of him. I think that's why he could get over in a company like WWE because it would be something a lot of the fans would be very interested in seeing. It's like, oh my god, look at this guy, it's so crazy. But in terms of character stuff, he can be hard to take seriously in that regard. So once again, you notice a trend. A lot of these guys might need managers. I think in AEW, he did have a manager as Taz initially. Lance Archer also had a manager in Jake Roberts, which I don't know if that's happening. Does Lance Archer even do anything anymore in AEW? I know he was hurt because he landed on his head during some botched move, but... Is Jake Roberts even still his manager? I don't know. WWE is at the point now where they just need to really start building up their next crop of top talent. So Cody came in. That was kind of a gift wrap thing for them. He just kind of was like, oh, I left AEW. Now I'm here. But they still have a lack outside of Roman. And I guess Randy Orton can come back and Matt Riddle's back too. But, uh, you know, he's going to be in the tag team thing. We need a new, nice, fresh pasture, a new crop of like top level dudes. Would Brian Cage do that? No. Would Lance Archer do that? If you give him the right manager and right appeal, he could potentially be like what Baron Corbin was before they totally ruined him. Just this big, scary guy that just beats the life out of people. So I would probably say Lance Archer. Because Brian Cage, he's cool and stuff, but I think his ceiling is pretty low just because he just doesn't have the other intangibles. But Lance Archer, I would say, should be number three. That goes on to number four, though, Wardlow. Once again, the dude was over beyond comprehension a number of months ago. The Powerbomb Symphony, he turned on MJF, right? I mean, dude, the crowd was losing their mind for this guy. Once again, I don't know what he does now. I don't know if he's even on TV the past number of weeks. Typical AEW, the roster so bloated, someone does something good, and then it's like, oh, we don't have time for you this week. We have time for all the other garbage on the show, though. Wardlow is very similar to Hops. Big dude, very convincing look. Wardlow is more clean-cut looking than a guy like Hobbs is, so I think Wardlow could do better as a big face, whereas Hobbs could be a big heel if you want to go that route with it. But Wardlow isn't even terrible on the mic. He's not good. Once again, not many people in AEW are, or WWE for that matter at this point. But you get him in WWE, he gets better at the promos, Otherwise, he's got every single thing you need. He's got the size. He's very athletic for a dude as big as he is. He's got the good look, right? So Wardlow's another dude where he's just waiting to burst onto the scene if he just had a competent booker. And WWE is hit or miss when it comes to that, but they would use his talents much better than AEW. That's not even debatable at this point. Tony Khan has had heat in his hand with Wardlow, lightning in a bottle with Wardlow for months and months. Aside from the time he turned on MJF, he got a big pop there, but what else has he really done? It has not really been anything. I bet Vince McMahon is in the back of his limo calling Triple H like, you need to sign this guy Wardlow, he's so big. He's right. And the obvious segue here, the final guy on this list, as you might have imagined, is MJF. Now, the question with MJF, a lot of people ask is, would he be taken seriously in WWE given his size? So, MJF is listed at six foot or something i mean guys wrestling billings lie about people's height and weight all the time wwe claims that jobby gargano is like 199 pounds he's probably 152 pounds soaking wet right so the heights and weights are always inflated to make them appear bigger max does wear lifts in his shoes as i've seen online over and over which again you can't really fault him for that i think his natural height is like five eight but the good thing is that in recent years this has 
been improved for the shorter guys, right? We've seen Daniel Bryan have world championship runs. Sami Zayn, who is a little bit taller, but he's sickly looking, basically. He looks like a homeless person. He just was fighting Roman Reigns. Kevin Owens has a big, fat beer gut. He's in the world title picture, the tag team title picture, right? So just because you don't fit the conventional aesthetic anymore doesn't mean that you're not going to be taken seriously. And the thing with MJF is, one, he's pretty built now. And two, he can talk up a storm as we know. So those things, I think, are going to negate any of those concerns. If Vince McMahon was running things, he might take him down to only being a manager, which he would be a great manager regardless. People will say, oh, but he was going to do that to Adam Cole. Adam Cole has no physique. Those are two totally different things. Adam Cole's head is as big as his torso. He has the arms of like a 15-year-old girl to play softball. Right, you cannot compare Adam Cole to most of these other guys, especially somebody like MJF who is clearly in shape. You can make the argument that they might not put him in the world title scene often or at all, given those things, but I think just the way that he organically will get over just how natural of an entertainer and a talker and a performer he is, I think he could go into any promotion anywhere in the world and get heat. He's just that good with like crowd dynamics and psychology and stuff, so I don't think that's going to be a concern. But once again, MJF is a guy who could walk into the WWE and he could roast Roman Reigns. He could roast Cody Rhodes. He could roast Randy Orton. He could even stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Cena and roast John Cena, right? Like, he can go with anybody on the microphone. So that puts him into his own tier. I think on this list, Ricky Starks is the only other guy that could do that. You could easily see Ricky Starks in the ring going at Roman Reigns, right? Like, these guys are just such natural talkers. So... In terms of the pedigree, MJF is definitely the highest on this list, just given the fact that he has been the AEW World Champion now for a while. And how he ends up dropping that, I'm not entirely sure. The AEW crowd now are like, oh, dude, it should be MJF versus Adam Cole at Wembley Stadium. Yeah, you're going to have a sickly-looking homeless dude like Adam Cole, which Adam Cole can talk to his credit. Vince was right about him again. He should be a manager because he's not convincing at all as a wrestler. He looks embarrassing. But MJF versus Adam Cole... I'm sure it's going to be like a 30-minute match. God forbid Adam Cole goes over. I don't know what's going to happen there, man. But these are the five guys, in my opinion, that could go to WWE tomorrow and make an immediate impact. Some of them, they might prefer to go in NXT for a bit to kind of polish them up to the WWE pristine liking, so to speak. But these are dudes who are not going to be used properly in AEW. Even MJF, he's the champion. He's got the most pull out of all these guys. He knows that Tony Khan is a mark. He has said it himself in promos over and over and over. People think he's only joking or all that stuff. He's telling truth through the character. MJF knows he's much smarter than Tony Khan is. 